Today we're in Mesa Verde in Colorado. We're headed up the mountain right now. We're gonna go do a hike up to a cliff dwelling. These cliff dwellings were built by the Anasazi. Those of us familiar with Forrest Fenn's treasure know that the turquoise beads that were on the bracelet that he put in his treasure chest came from the Mesa Verde cliff dwellings. Sometime around 1200 AD, it's believed that something major happened to make the Pueblo people change the way they were living because around 1250, they moved from the mesa and began building settlements high in the cliffs. Today, we are going to be making our journey down a metal staircase. Right in the beginning of this tour, we're going to lose 130 feet in elevation. We're getting ready to go on our cliff dwelling hike. We're going down the stairs. The park ranger said that this trail here was put in by the park service and it's about a hundred years old. Still in good condition. I'll turn you around and I'll show you behind me here. We're going to be climbing up this ladder. It's a 10 foot ladder so we're going to be climbing up the ladder next. Researchers aren't sure what drove the Anasazi to retreat to the cliffs and fortified villages, and why the villages were built so high in the cliffs is a mystery. One theory is that they were attacked. Some of the remains found in the area had their skulls crushed and their scalps removed. Also, these remains weren't buried in the traditional way. It's unknown for sure how the Anasazi had scaled the cliffs, let alone lived there. It took skill and courage to live among those cliffs. It wasn't too bad of a hike. We're already here at the cliff dwelling. And this is something to see. This is amazing. Okay, I'm going to take you down here. Awesome. Awesome. Oh man, if you haven't been, this is a must see. So up there, there's a beam, a wooden beam, and there's two wooden posts that come out that are dated back to 1100, 1200, and they are original that came here to visit last summer is that they shared with me that it's not that hard to carve a stone block out of sandstone using a stone tool. And with practice and perseverance, of course, it could take maybe 30 minutes to carve out a stone block from sandstone. Why the Pueblo people left the area is a mystery. For a long time, researchers thought it could have been from the drought that lasted from 1276 to 1299. It's also believed the Anasazi people might have nearly deforested the region, chopping down trees for their shelters and firewood. I'm good. Okay, I gotta put my camera away. These cliff villages that we're looking at today were well preserved by the dry climate and stone overhangs. In the 1880s, Anglo explorers discovered these dwellings. They named the builders of these empty structures cliff dwellers. And today, they're protected by the National Park Service. All done with the tour. What a great place. You guys have to come if you have not been here yet. The tour was like five dollars, right? Five dollars a person. Five dollars a person. But I would bring plenty of water 
I would bring, make sure you bring something like a backpack to carry your phone and your water in because you need both hands for sure. And do it early before it gets hot. Oh yeah, do the hike early before it gets hot because in the afternoon the sun shines right into the Pueblo ruins and they said it's really hot. There you go, those are some tips. I think that is probably about the end of our trails for today. We will talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoy.